Hey, what's up, everybody? It is, what is it, Tuesday, January 12th. All right, so I said I was going to answer questions. Somebody uh, asked me in the comments, hey, Mike, you talk about inflation being a function of price setting. Could you please explain that? So, sure, here goes. When you talk about inflation, usually what causes it is some monopolistic force that has price setting power. Let me explain. An, an easy example would be, for example, a patent. A patent is issued by the government to a particular company that has the monopoly on a certain drug. By virtue of that, it can set prices and it could set prices at whatever level basically it wants. There's no competitive force there to mitigate that price rise. And we saw a good example of this a few years ago with that guy, Martin Screckel, whatever his name was, he had that one drug and he got the, the monopoly on that, the patent, and he raised it from something like, you know, $40 to almost $6,000. So that's an example. Another example that I talk about frequently is rate setting. Rate setting is a function of the government, of the central bank. It's a monopolist in its currency and it's uh, a, a monopolist in its rate setting function. And the cost of credit is reflected in the cost of all goods and services. When the cost of credit goes up, it raises the general price level of most things because, again, the cost of credit is reflected in that. Printing money or the expansion of the money supply, uh, that doesn't automatically lead to price increases. It could be a one-time effect. For example, if the government suddenly flooded the economy with money, you could have, uh, as a first reaction, a rise in prices across the board. But that price rise would induce producers to raise output. That At least that would happen in a competitive economy. So it would be a relative increase, in other words, a one-time increase, and then you would see prices stabilize. That's not inflation. Uh, and it's also an explanation as to why we have seen over the last really 40 years a massive expansion in the monetary base in the so-called you know debt which has gone from like 800 billion to 27 trillion while at the same time inflation has not been an issue why exactly for that reason the rise in the amount of money has induced producers to produce more, so the quantity of goods and services increases, and that has mitigated any rise in the price. Really, for inflation to happen and for it to be sustained, something in the system either has to be broken, which would inhibit the ability of the competitive forces in the economy to respond to uh, a large increase in the money supply, or again, there has to be some monopolistic force. I talked yesterday or in my last video about OPEC in the 1970s, you know, how they raised prices, they, they instituted an embargo and they raised prices and it was a cartel and it was really, you know, the price setting mechanism for oil. So in order to have a sustained inflation, really, it's not about the quantity of money it's that something in the system has to be broken where the economy and the competitive forces in the economy cannot respond to the higher quantity of money or demand for goods and services. Maybe there's a shortage of something. That could be an issue too. Maybe there's a shortage of something which is, is really, really uh, a primary need. Again, we go back to oil which is a factor uh, in so many things, not just in fuel and transportation, but it's used in manufacture. It's used in e it also in food processing, a lot of things. 
Uh, it's a critical component of the economy, at least it was, you know, back in the 70s. In that instance, again, you have a situation where there was a monopolistic force that raises prices. So that's really what it boils down to. And people who invoke the Zimbabwe analogy or the Weimar Republic, that's inapplicable because, again, you know, Zimbabwe, that was a broken economy. It was corrupt. It didn't have the productive capacity capacity to keep up with the expansion in the printing of their currency. And in the case of the Weimar, uh, you know, post-World War I Germany, reparations had to be paid in foreign currency. France occupied the industrial part of Germany at that time. Uh, so again, Germany didn't have the capacity to uh, meet the demand and, and produce, and they had to pay in foreign currency. So the printing of the mark back then spiraled into a hyperinflation. In a normal functioning competitive economy, the expansion in the amount in the amount of money in the money supply will not necessarily read, uh, lead to a price inflation. There has to be a price setter in there that has uh, power over prices, and it's just not the case. I mean, it's the, in the United States, if you want to point at one entity, it would be the Fed or the government in its rate setting capacity. Uh, but that's it. We have a competitive economy. The amount of money created, again, all it does is induces further production, which increases the supply of goods and services, which mitigates any inflation. So that's the answer to that. I hope that settles it. Uh, leave your comments below and continue posting the questions you want me to answer. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.